Today in Letters You Don't Want to Get. It's Friday afternoon in October of 2018, and the Michigan Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs receives an anonymous letter. This letter tells the department to send investigators to the Cantrell Funeral Home in Detroit and check a secret compartment in the ceiling. This sounds like the start of a fun mystery, right? <laughs> it was not that, though, because the letter goes on to give, quote, explicit instructions as to how to locate the infant corpses within the building. Now, if you're getting this letter, if I'm getting this letter, our first response is gonna be, what? But you know it's been a rough few months, or in this case, years for the Michigan Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs, when the investigators probably just sighed, grabbed their body bags, and said, guess we're headed back over to control. Because as distressing as getting these step-by-step -step instructions to babies in the ceiling is, this was not the first issue at Cantrell Funeral Home. Welcome to our four-part series on cadaver crimes, the strangest death and funeral-related crime stories that are seldom told. Such a series hath been foretold on Patreon, where when we reached 3,500 patrons, we'd award your generosity with a four-part video offering on the subject. This first story is one I've been asked about constantly. If you've dealt with baby loss, this video might be hard for you. I don't know why I'm putting a content warning on this video, considering all my other videos, but this story is particularly brutal. Like I said, the babies were not Cantrell's first ride at the unethical rodeo. The funeral home had been the focus of several investigations as early as 1996. The funeral home had repeatedly been investigated and fined for things like, but not limited to, employing unlicensed embalmers, failure to embalm a body in a timely manner, and refusing to bury an unclaimed, unfortunate foreshadowing here, infant. They just held on to the infant, waiting for its family to pay the unpaid balance. Let me stop here and explain the unpaid balance issue. Obviously, in countries where there are private funeral homes, those funeral homes charge money for their services. They charge a fee to cremate a body, let's say $1,000, and they charge a fee to bury a body, let's say $4,000. Legally, if a family hasn't paid, the funeral home doesn't have to perform the service. They can say, no money, no cremation. And full disclosure, my funeral home has a policy like that. We enforce this policy very liberally and with kindness, and we always work with our lower income families to make the cremation or burial happen as soon as possible. But if there aren't complex insurance or pre-needs involved, it's standard practice to pay before the service takes place. But what's not ethical, and in fact not legal, is a funeral home holding a body hostage until payment is made. The family has a right to pick up the body and go elsewhere at any time. But sometimes funeral directors try to hide the fact that the family has that right to pick up and go in order to collect on the investment of time or resources they've already made. They don't want to lose the case, as someone in the industry would say. This is speculation, to be clear. But what could have happened here is that the family couldn't afford Cantrell's price for burial. And so Cantrell just didn't do anything with the infant's body. They just held on to it for way longer than it should have taken to work something out and bury the child. So needless to say, Cantrell wasn't a beacon of funeral industry integrity. Then it got worse. In April of 2016, that's six months before the baby incident, when the funeral home was investigated yet again, the authorities shut them down when they found filthy, quote, deplorable conditions in the embalming room and several improperly stored embalmed corpses in an unrefrigerated garage. Some of the bodies were molding and another's facial area was covered in unknown fluids. Investigators found more than 20 bodies that were improperly stored by the funeral home. 
Raymond Cantrell II, who was the funeral home's owner and operator at the time, claimed he was keeping all these bodies as a favor for the families who could not afford burial or cremation. Uh, Raymond, I get the sentiment, but it's only a favor if you store them safely and properly, or help the family find services that are lower cost than the ones you offer. Just don't do me any favors, okay? You can save the favors. The state of Michigan, like all of us here, I think, wasn't buying it. So that's April. In August, the Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs, or LARA, got an anonymous phone call saying that there were corpses hidden throughout the funeral home. When they came to search the funeral home, in the dark, no less, because the power had been shut off, investigators found a ladder in a closet that led to the attic. All of this sounds like the premise of a horror movie, but they didn't find anything in the attic this time. But upon going into the basement, a basement that smelled of embalming chemicals, had garbage up to the investigators' knees, and featured a big old bucket of blood and embalming solution just left there, they found a body of a stillborn fetus in a box sitting on a table. And yet we are still not done. In October, that anonymous letter I mentioned at the beginning arrived at Lara. That letter claimed that a former worker at the funeral home had hidden bodies in the ceiling of the establishment and was trying to figure out how to retrieve them. Said the letter, if you look above the door, there is a crawl space and she has several infant corpses placed back there dating back from over 10 years ago. The anonymous informant additionally claimed that this corpse hider had forged multiple documents over the years, including death certificates. So investigators saddled up again and headed back to Cantrell. This time they followed the instructions in the letter and discovered the closet crawl space in the attic between the first and second floor. There was no doubt that this was a hiding place. In a lowered ceiling, you would only know was an attic crawl space if you were looking for it. They found the bodies in a closet obscured behind some insulation. In total, 11 individual remains were found. Two infants were found in a small white casket, and nine stillborn bodies were found in a cardboard box wrapped in trash bags. Some were embalmed, some were mummified. After this discovery, funeral industry professionals stepped in to help notify all the next of kin and transfer the bodies to a local cemetery. Some of the families had thought that the bodies had already been cremated by Cantrell. The manager at Cantrell claimed ignorance and couldn't believe this had happened. Really? How many dozens of mummified bodies do you need in the rafters of your establishment before you're like, wait a second? This all leads to one of my pet peeves about the funeral industry, the difference between licensing and inspection. This is all a little insider baseball, but we have very tough requirements to be licensed as a funeral director or funeral home establishment in the United States. Tougher than anywhere else in the world, I believe. Too tough, in fact. Because in preventing what happened at Cantrell, it's not about how much school you've attended. You don't need more training or more expensive school to know you're not supposed to hide infant corpses in the ceiling. People at big investment firms have fancy finance degrees, but that doesn't mean they're all ethical. Training for funeral service is well and good, but it's more important that consistent and thorough inspections are happening after someone is granted a license. This had been going on for years at Cantrell, and that's where I'd prefer money and time to be going. This is an unpopular opinion, but I think anyone should be able to enter the funeral industry and train on the job. That works if you have oversight and inspections. That is to say, requiring high ethical standards and strict procedures for that person to stay in the industry. I wish I could say this is the most unbelievable story we could find, but it's not. I mean, it's up there, but well, just tune in next week. I don't know what to tell you, Deathlings. This video was made with generous donations from death enthusiasts just like you. Cadaver crumbs. Cadaver crumbs. <clears throat> Here we go. But we have very tough requirement. But we have a very tough require. But we have very tough requirements to be a light bleh, in trash bags. Or found in trash bags.
Ah, sirens. Perhaps another crime is afoot. What? I'm gonna take off all this now. Pause that for a sec. Fix the old hair, hope it hasn't been ruined by my hat. 